This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. So, some bad news today. Oh, yeah? What do you got? The economic collapse of America is here. So, many have been predicting that for many years, since the 60s, since the 70s. I think it kind of really went into overdrive when Nixon totally took us off the gold standard. And then some very learned people who understood economics started that battle cry that the economic collapse of America is around the corner because the the currency is now fiat currency backed by nothing. Therefore, it's just an illusion. And as soon as the people figure out that it has no worth, the, the collapse is coming and it will be the biker zombie apocalypse and humans <laughs> eating other humans and, you know, back to, like the Mad Max movie. And I mean, we've been hearing that since the 70s. And, and yet, you know, except for a brief period where we were f- flirting with that back in whenever that was, 2007, when... What few people know, we were literally on the precipice of a worldwide economic collapse. But everything, for all intents and purposes, kind of seems like it just keeps going business as normal, doesn't it? I mean, like, we're not seeing it's- Venezuela-style inflation where you you get paid in the morning and you got to go run and buy a can of tuna then because if you wait two hours, it's... Now, Triple, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's kind of been looking like things have just been going on business as usual, right? I mean, it was uh, a little slow, but I I agree. I'm even seeing, and I don't want to get ahead of you, but I'm seeing a lot of the practices in real estate that I saw back then, and I can't understand how how we'll go through without another little little blip in the system. Yeah, you know, so to be honest with you, I almost try to remain ignorant about most of that stuff because it makes me feel bad. First of all, you know, nobody can predict this stuff right. I mean, there's all kinds of predictions of the the home building industry will collapse or it's and others will say, no, it's on an upswing. And and then, of course, you know, there's an entire industry about predicting what what the stock market is going to do. And and nobody ever gets that right. But 50% of the time they do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so does so uh, does the chimp throwing darts at a board to select the stocks to invest in. He does just as good a job as the experts. So when I saw these statistics, this was depressing. You know what? I just got to be totally transparent. I am experiencing a a a down a low energy day coupled with just generally feeling bad and perception is reality and i've noticed that when i feel bad then the negative things become my focus there there was a great test where they showed depressed people and clinically you know the people who met the clinic diagnostic criteria for depression And people who were not depressed, they showed them images of a funeral and a wedding. And it was the same amount of images. Like, for example, it was 10 images of a funeral and 10 images of a wedding. They were just kind of mixed up. Like, you know, maybe you'd see a couple images of a funeral. Then you'll see an image of a wedding. 
you know, then an image of a funeral. But it was it was 10, 10, same amount of images, 10 images of the funeral, 10 images of the wedding. Well, the depressed people, when asked about it, said, oh, yes, there were a lot. There were a lot more images of the funeral than the wedding. And the people who weren't depressed said, oh, no, there were a lot more images of the wedding than the funeral. So perception is reality. And my particular perception today, <laughs> this is not a day when <laughs> when you want to ask me to be up about stuff. My perception just on this particular day is I'm just not feeling good about many things. I'm not feeling good about what I'm about to tell you about. Don't happen to be particularly feeling good about myself. So I'm going to do my best to turn <laughs> turn this negative into a positive. By God, I'm going to make lemonade out of lemons. So, man. I want to dig into some of that. I have to interrupt you before you get into these sad stats. Yeah, please do. So, Dan, when was the last time you felt down like this? Oh, this is uh, this is a lifetime thing. So the cycle. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, a lifetime thing. Since have you ever tracked it? Mm, no, no, can't say I've ever tracked it, bro. I'm finding that it's quite common in people who are attracted to, like, most of the musicians I know, this is a lifetime thing for them. The You need it, though, don't you, to, to, to create that music? Yeah, it's, it's what I'm finding out. It's necessary to, to go through everything you have to go through to improve in whatever you want to improve. Those people who are just happy don't have the same desire and work ethic and cognitive style necessary to endure all the stuff you have to go through to get better. Like, so, so the producer on my new CD has said the same thing, like all of the world class musicians he works with are on some some scale of depression, self-hate, self-doubt, some scale it it might be in many cases extreme and might in many cases you know just bordering more on neurosis and in <laughs> self-doubt but they all have it because it is what has driven them to become great because what they what they have have what they what they had to go through to become great at doing what they do and even though they are masters what they continue to subject themselves to to become even better this sort of cognitive style which often involves some sort of neuroses or clinical depression is the cognitive style that makes this happen the happy-go-lucky optimist who's like, hey, life is great, and always sees the glasses half full and everything. Those are the people who encounter much difficulties going through what it truly takes, you know, to, to really excel at something, if that makes sense. It's a cognitive style that is common to most high achievers. I think that's it right there. Because this is here... This is so fucking fascinating to me right now, Dan, because you're you're in a down cycle, right? I just I'm coming off of one and I'm starting to look at my calendar and say, when was the last time I was in here? And it looks like I might be able to track that a little bit because it was around May of last year, too, where I had a down cycle. I was just hunting with a buddy and he just went through that as he had a child and he had to step away from the business for a second. He thought it was going to run itself. It didn't. And then a bunch of reality hit him. And then he went into a down spiral. That's it. When you're an achiever, you're us as achievers. We are the peop the most dissatisfied people in the world because no matter how well we do, we're still competing against ourselves and we still want to do better. And I'm trying to figure out, like, is, is this something that you can plot and know that um, my down season is coming and I need to prepare for that? That that is, I think, in the longer vision, going to be powerful for you if you can predict 
when they're coming or how they're or how your energy is flowing so that you can work through that. But it's fucking normal is the thing. It's normal with all of us. So it's fascinating to me. This is an interesting observation, and this is totally going a different direction than I <laughs> than I originally intended. But I do find this fascinating myself. Now, when I'm in a down period, it's it's very hard for me to be objective and look at things objectively because uh, it's just like the the that test with the images of the funeral and the and the weddings. When I'm in a down cycle like this, in my particular case, it's extreme. It's it's not just oh gee um you know I'm not feeling all that great and uh, geez that's gosh that. Mm, that last newsletter was lacking. No, <laughs> it's pretty I damn extreme. I hate life. <laughs> it's like, uh, like I told my wife today, okay, well, I have just proved it. I am a fraud. I am a phony. I have invested tens of thousands of hours to get good at something that I now completely suck at and I am no longer relevant. I'm 53 and this market wants young people who talk about the latest bright, shiny object of how you can get rich with, with Facebook chat box. Hell, even by now, you know, that, that maybe that's passe and that's not the thing. Yeah. You know, whatever the next thing is, artificial intelligence, I'm researching artificial intelligence now regards to marketing. So, so maybe like the, the, the hot thing now or the upcoming hot thing is going to be the artificial intelligence advertising platforms. And I'm irrelevant because I'm not talking about that stuff because it comes and goes that those bright, shiny objects could last weeks at the most. And I just keep talking about really the timeless aspects of this marketing stuff, which is human nature and how to understand human nature so that you can create offers and create persuasive copy to to convert them. But now I'm irrelevant. Halbert went through that, by the way, felt like he was he had become irrelevant as he got older. In my case, it's extreme, even to the point of, you know, like, wow, boy, have I deluded myself. Even my wife today says, what's going on? She goes, I, I said, I got to I got to record some podcast episodes today. And then that set me down the road as, God, I am a self-absorbed, arrogant blowhard to even believe <laughs> that anybody would want to hear anything that a nobody schmuck like me has to say because I have fucked up my entire life and I'm a failure and I'm a fraud because, you know, I should have more money than God right now, but I pissed it all away because of bad poverty programming that always got me back to my comfort zone. And it's extreme. Now, it feels really, really bad when I'm in the middle of it. But every other person I talk to who's in any sort of thing where they just want to do whatever it takes to improve, it doesn't have to be making money. It doesn't have to be starting a business, although that this does apply to most entrepreneurs. It can be really any artist or athlete or any person who wants to get good at making if you want to become a master at making sushi, I mean, watch the movie Jiro. Hero, a, a J-I-R-O, you know, because the, the Japanese believe the mastering of anything, what, uh, no matter how other lesser mortals might look down upon that ah, guy just making sushi, their idea is the mastering of anything. It's irrelevant. Because what you're truly trying to master is yourself. So usans are constantly unsatisfied. And I even saw, you know, a funny cartoon said the life of an entrepreneur. And it it charted it almost on a half hour basis, you know, log in and get the (laughs) results of your latest ad test in the the entrepreneur's reacting. Oh, my God, I suck. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go apply for the greeter job at Walmart. Half hour later, logs in, 
checks his stats, has made 10 sales, has a 5.3% conversion. And the little cartoon guys Ooh. jumping up and down saying, I rock, I'm awesome. Half hour later, check something, you know, unsubscribes, you know, hundreds of unsubscribes and, and he's back in his depression. It's like this roller coaster between depression and elation. You know, some psychiatrist, I have a night in my marketing can a lot, uh, Dr. Kenny, who's a, a uh, I was going to say nationally recognized, actually internationally recognized expert on uh, ADHD. And uh, it'd be interesting to him hear him chime in on this because it sure sounds like mental illness to me. But if that's the case, then <laughs> damn near every entrepreneur I know and every musician striving to be the best he can and every artist trying to be the best he can, we're all mentally, every athlete, every, athlete, every everybody that wants to do something that's worth something, every, every, every mother who wants to be the best mother she can and makes efforts to do that in, in whatever way she does it. Well, then that means we're all mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> ah, so, Dan, look, I derailed you. So do you want to share those stats that I took you way far off of? I'll share these stats and I'm just going to try to keep this from getting too depressing. So <laughs> and, and un I'm worried now. Unfortunately, my observations are backing this up and it. uh Figuratively, not literally, because then I'd be dead. It figuratively breaks my heart to see this as I do impromptu interviews with people as I run into, like the waitress the other night at Bonefish Grill. She backs this up. The United Way has done a study on a group of, a group of Americans they call ALICE, A-L-I-C-E. Stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. The study found that this group does not make the money needed to survive in the modern economy. OK, so we're not talking about Willie, the homeless crack addict like we talked about last week. <laughs> homeless crack addict hustler. And no, we're not talking about the guy that when you stop at the at the red light, he's spraying your windshield with the with the bottle and washing it, hoping to get a bottle. Alice is. The people who take care of your children, they're the child care workers at uh, at at the preschool. They are your parents or your grandparents on Social Security. It's the cashier at your supermarket. It's the guy working in the gas station. It's the salesperson at Best Buy. It's your waitress. It's not like Bonefish Grill is, you know, five star deal, but it's a nice probably mid priced restaurant but the waitress two dollar signs on yelp exactly the waitress at the restaurant the home health person the office clerk these people can't pay their bills they've got little to nothing in savings and if they have a situation where they need to come up with 400 bucks for some emergency they can't do it they are forced to make these tough decisions between like, well, I got to go to my job, so I got to decide between paying for child care or paying the rent or their car breaks down or they get some medical bill they hadn't planned for. Those two minor things alone pushes the Alice people over the edge. These are not lazy people. These are not stupid people. These are hardworking members of the community who are employed, but they don't earn enough to afford the basic necessities of life. And they're not earning at the poverty level either, but they do earn enough to just pay for a basic bare bones household budget of housing. And believe me, they ain't living in a McMansion. Very humble housing. Child care, food, transportation, health care. That's why I say the economic collapse of America is here. It ain't coming like everybody predicted, like there's going to be some big event and then we're going to have the collapse. It's here now. 
And when hardworking families should be middle class and these people in the past, like when I was a kid, they were middle class and could afford the basic necessities of living and and live comfortably. I'm not talking about living like Thurston Howell the third, which is totally dated me. Many listeners don't even get that <laughs> reference. Just just Google it. And I they, love it. they were middle class. Now they can't they can't even afford a middle class existence. They can't afford they can barely afford to eat and keep a roof over their heads. And it only appears that things are going to devolve even further. It ain't getting better. Now, we can get into all the reasons of why this has happened. It's been engineered since 1930. Yeah. Well, I was going to say 1933. It really, it, it was, the idea was fomented in 1913. But 1933 was a key year of making this happen. Is that the Jekyll Island this deal? Jekyll no. Island would be 1913. 1933 was when the United States became what they call a bankrupt corporation with possession. So what that means is there are certain bankruptcies where they take all your possessions. There are other forms of bankruptcies where they leave you your possessions. So the U.S. is a corporation, not a government, that is a bankrupt corporation with possessions. The people who is, it, this bankrupt corporation is indebted to now were nice enough to leave them their possessions. So this, <laughs> this engineered devaluation of the money supply is the real reason why this has happened and it's and it's really just to enrich the lives of of a handful of families. And now if you're going to ask me what is the solution for this, no freaking idea. I I've got no answer for this. It breaks my heart to see good people have to suffer this, hard working people who do jobs that I just think my god, they're killing themselves. You know, the digging the ditches with the jackhammer or the physically digging the ditch in the Florida summer heat when it's 98 degrees and 98 percent humidity for 10 bucks an hour. The only solution that that I can offer you is to recognize the problem. You don't have to take my word for it. You can do your own research, recognize where it's going. It ain't getting better. And then. Work your ass off to make sure that you're not one of them, that you don't become Mm -hmm. an Alice yourself. And, you know, sometimes they kill the messenger. And this was (laughs) not a popular message. But the warning is that you can look around and see this happening, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can make things happen to make sure you're not one of the Alice people. My favorite thing, my default is to start a business and, and on a bootstrap budget and just work your ass off and bootstrap that thing and build yourself a side income and invest what you need to reinvest to keep the business going and growing while still taking as much money off the table as you can to sock away in savings while you hopefully build that business to the point where it can support you and you can dump your job. And that's what I did. And it ain't an easy thing to do, but the best time to start it is now. Because I'm worried if you don't start it now, in five years, 10 years, we're going to be reading about you as an Alice statistic. Boom. Hey, Dan, what do you have coming up for us next time? Next time, I'm talking about GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation that's coming out of Europe, which everybody is talking about right now. And I have an unusual observation about that that I'm going to share. 
And I think it might be one of the most valuable lessons in persuasion that you might ever hear. Love it. So the funny part here is we just gave away our time travel. People be hearing the same. That was months ago. Yeah. Now you know. Yeah. GDPR will be a dated message, but people's reaction to it and how you can use that to make money is the timeless part. Because, you know, fill in the blanks in another couple months, six months, year, it's going to be some other regulation from some other government, state, federal, or even some foreign government, and people are going to react the same damn way, which I'll tell you all about next week. Looking forward to it. Another Off the Chain show is in the can. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Canine Crew got a special treat for you, what we are affectionately referring to as the Off the Chain Hotline. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Ask questions. We don't care. Just call 321-424-6043 and give us a piece of your mind. This is the PodcastFactory.com.